The largest undersea volcano just cracked open. How do submerged volcanoes function? We don't know for the most part. Since thousands of feet of water obscure the eruptions from view, more than 70% of volcanic eruptions occur underwater, leaving scientists in the dark about their nature. Welcome back to Volcano Now. Let's take a look at some of the largest undersea volcanoes and how they just cracked open. Before we move on, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel and turn the post notifications on. So what is an undersea volcano and how does it work? Magma rises from the Earth's interior to the surface of the land or the ocean floor during a volcanic eruption. As the pressure on the magma decreases throughout the ascent, the dissolved gases in the magma begin to bubble. When these dissolved gases are suddenly released, an explosive eruption happens on land. Consider the coke bottle bubbles that erupt when a shaken bottle is opened and the pressure is quickly released. But after the lava hits the seafloor, it continues to be crushed beneath the weight of enormous amounts of seawater. Between 92 and 122 times the pressure at sea level, the Havre volcano, located between 3,000 and 4,000 feet below sea level, is thought to have reduced its explosiveness and sculpted the many kinds of lava flows. In addition to altering how lava forms, magma interacts with water quite differently when cooling than when it interacts with the air. At 800 degrees Celsius, the water instantly vaporizes when it comes in contact with heated lava. Its quick conversion to steam has the potential to be powerful enough to shatter the lava. On the other hand, when magma is exposed to water, the temperature difference is so significant that the magma immediately hardens. This process is known as quenching. A caldera in the Sunda Strait, which separates the islands of Java and Sumatra, began to erupt during the summer of 1883 due to the growing turbulence. This eruption sent enormous plumes of ash and steam into the sky. Then, on August 26, an undersea volcano erupted, sending pumice ash and hot lava flows across adjacent towns as it expelled some six miles of material. Thousands of people died as a result of this eruption. One of the worst underwater eruptions in recorded history is still the Krakatoa. On January 15, 2022, Nearly 150 years after the first underwater giant came to life, this one was set off on the coast of Tonga. However, the Hunga Tonga Hunga Ha'apai eruption and subsequent tsunamis were unique. Volcanologists captured the furious eruption of the undersea mountain in real time, and what they discovered surprised them. The eruption damaged an undersea communications cable, effectively cutting the country in the South Pacific from the rest of the world. However, satellites managed to record hundreds of lightning strikes emanating from the volcano's ash clouds. Remote sensors captured strong shockwaves that reverberated around the world for days. Unprecedented heights that were reached by the column of ash that lingered in the planet's atmosphere. The Hunga Tonga eruption continues to be a humanitarian catastrophe for the country of Tonga, which has a population of just under 100,000, as well as a tale of mystery and caution for the rest of the world. It caused scientists to reevaluate their theories regarding the dangers of numerous undersea volcanoes hidden beneath the waters. The search is now on to find these submerged seamounts to safeguard land and ocean. Rarely does water from volcanic eruptions ever enter the atmosphere. Only two earlier eruptions, the 2008 Kasatochi event in Alaska and the 2015 Kalbako eruption in Chile, have transported considerable amounts of water vapor to such high altitudes during the 18 years that NASA has been collecting data. But compared to the Tonga event, those were merely blips and the water vapor from the earlier two eruptions swiftly vanished. On the other hand, the extra water vapor that the Tonga volcano released may stay in the stratosphere for several years. This additional water vapor may impact the atmosphere's chemistry, accelerating some chemical reactions that can momentarily exacerbate ozone layer depletion. Additionally, it might affect surface temperatures. 
Krakatoa and Mount Pinatubo are significant volcanic eruptions that often chill the Earth's surface by spewing gases, dust, and ash that reflect sunlight into space. The Tonga volcano, in contrast, did not release significant amounts of aerosols into the stratosphere. Yet the enormous quantities of water vapor produced by the eruption may have had a little transient warming effect since water vapor traps heat. The result wouldn't last long enough to dramatically increase the impact of climate change since the excess water vapor would disappear once it left the stratosphere. The MLS instrument, which tracks natural microwave emissions from the Earth's atmosphere, was well placed to find this water vapor's plume. The MLS can see through obstructions like ash clouds that can blind other instruments used for measuring water vapor in the stratosphere by measuring these signals. MLS was the only instrument coverage dense enough to capture the water vapor plume as it happened and the only one that wasn't affected by the ash that the volcano had released. The enormous explosion of Hunga Tonga created oscillations transmitted outwards, including sound waves, atmosphere waves, and ocean waves. The waves' failure to follow the expected pattern of disintegration was even more peculiar. They appeared to have more energy and produced a well-documented wave to the Ross Ice Shelf in Antarctica. Volcanologists intend to develop early warning systems, assess environmental damage, lessen the dangers of eruptions, and assist in ecosystem recovery by using increasingly sophisticated detection techniques. Who is looking for the location of the next submarine volcano? What's the next step? Scientists have found more information about the moon's surface than the ocean floor, making it considerably more challenging to find volcanoes in the deep sea than those on land. However, this eruption of Hunga Tonga has energized the scientific community and highlighted the necessity for more research into this undiscovered territory. Niwa of New Zealand sets sail for the scene of Tonga's violent eruption in April of 2022. Their vessel, the RV Tangaroa, examined tens of thousands of square kilometers of the sea floor and gathered physical samples and video footage for later analysis on the shore. The caldera's height before the eruption was roughly 120 meters. It is now one kilometer deep. Niwa maintains an ongoing study program to analyze seamounts, many of which are extinct volcanoes. Because most submarine explosions are concealed underneath miles of ocean water, there aren't many records. But those scientists have seen what could provide hints about future catastrophes. For instance, a massive new seamount was created in 2018 due to an underwater eruption off the coast of France's Mayotte Island, demonstrating the area's high seismic activity. Currently, a team of scientists on Revocima, a collaborative platform that monitors volcanic dangers like magma flow, water pressure and acidity, as well as seismicity, continuously monitors Mayotte and updates its activity regularly. The ruins of Pompeii in Italy are a stark reminder of the risks residing on or close to one of the multiple volcanoes worldwide. More recently, in 1980, Mount St. Helens in Washington state erupted, ripping more than 1,300 feet of the mountain's summit and resulting in an estimated $1.1 billion in economic losses due to deaths, injuries, breach destruction, and lost crops, among other things. Submarine volcanoes are an essential component of how the Earth functions. However, they are generally hidden from view, more challenging to sample than volcanoes on land, and can produce deadly tsunamis. Then an undervolcano is of no use, isn't it? Wrong. Underwater volcanoes bring in three elements that would not usually be present in the deep ocean. Hot water, minerals, and microorganisms. Water seeps into the opening on the ocean floor caused by a fracture. Then, bacteria in the Earth's crust settles in heated water, which can get as hot as 570 to 750 degrees Fahrenheit. The bacteria and many rock minerals dissolved by the superheated water are evacuated along with the heated water when the fissure bursts. The minerals and heat from the vents support the bacteria, helping them to grow. A dense carpet of bacteria is frequently the first indication of life in the area of a marine volcano. And that concludes today's video. We hope you liked today's video about underwater volcanoes. Thank you so much for watching Volcano Now. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and turn on notifications to stay up to date.
Make sure to check out similar videos from our channel, and we'll see you in the next one.